Hello everyone, Scott Friesen here at Simpletivity. And if you're already a subscriber here to the Simpletivity channel, you know that my greatest desire is to help you simplify your work life. I want you to spend as little time on the insignificant things so you can spend more time on your most important work. And you know, just recently I received a great question. In my last live webinar, I received a question about consolidating email addresses. Specifically, this person was asking about how she could combine two different Gmail accounts, two different Google accounts, so she could only deal with a single account. So today, we're going to be looking at how we can consolidate our email so we only have to deal with one email account here within Gmail. Now, what I have set up is I've got two test accounts. I've got this light colored account here. Now, if I click on the tab at the top, I've got this darker, this blue shaded account here. So the goal in this example is that we don't want to have to come back to this account ever again. We want everything that comes in to this second email account, we want it to arrive here in the first email account, but we also want to go one step beyond when we reply to the forwarded email from the email that is intended for this account. When this email comes in to the first account, we want to be able to reply from this account as well. Now, the steps that I'm going to be showing you are going to be specific to receiving and and, um, replying to emails within Gmail, but this second account doesn't necessarily need to be a Gmail account. It could be an Outlook account. It could be some other email service. So again, the goal is that we want to never ever come back to this account. We want to deal with all of our email here. And again, you may be managing uh, multiple email addresses. You may have personal email, business email. You may have a separate organization or, or some other business board or some other service that you provide volunteer hours with, you want to be able to deal with that in a single email address. So you don't have to bounce around to multiple accounts. So the first thing that we need to do, let's go to the second email address. This is the one that we want to essentially forget. We never want to come back here again. We want to go to settings. We're going to click on settings and we want to go to the forwarding area. Forwarding and pop IMAP is what it's called here in Gmail. And at the very top, we have forwarding. And I want to select add a forwarding address. Pretty simple, right? I just need to enter in the address that I want my future emails to go to. So this is the address of my test account. This is the light colored Gmail account. I'm going to select next. Um, it's going to give me a, a little dialog box. You want to proceed? Yes, that's the right address. I'm going to say proceed. And it's going to say that a confirmation code has been sent to verify permission. I'm going to say, OK, let's see if we've received that. So let's go back to the initial email address. And yes, here is that email. And it looks a little complicated here, but essentially it says to allow this second address to automatically forward mail to your address, please click this link to confirm. I'm going to select that link. Uh, do you want to confirm that uh, mail from this address will go to your address number one? And I'm going to say yes, confirm. Perfect. Confirmation success. So now that is set up with my first email address here. Now we do want to go back to this address just for a moment. Now you'll see that nothing has actually changed on this screen. If we come out of the dialog box and then go back in, let's go back to settings. And once again, we want to select the forwarding and pop IMAP section. Now you will see I have two radio buttons. So now disabled forwarding is set up by default. We need to come back into here and say, yes, please forward a copy of incoming mail to this address. This is the one that we just confirmed, Scott F test one. And the second option we have is what do we want to do with the mail that is going to remain here in the second address. Now you have a few different options. I usually say just keep Gmail's copy in the inbox. But if you want, you can mark them as read, you can archive them, you can delete what is happening here in this address that we are about to say uh, goodbye to, or maybe a better way to put it is that we're just going to ignore it going forward because we're going to be dealing with it in our first email address. So I'm going to leave it 
put at the initial one here, keep Gmail's copy in the inbox. So we're going to forward it to that new address. Be sure to select Save Changes. And then at the very top of your screen, you'll notice that it gives us a warning notification. You are forwarding your email to this address. This notice will end in seven days. So for the first week, it will remind you. If you do happen to come in here and log into this account, it's going to let you know that it's forwarding email to this address. But eventually, this uh, warning will go away. So let's test it out. Okay, let's go to a third email address. So now we have things set up. Let's make sure it's working properly. So I'm going to go to a different email address and I'm going to craft a new email. So let's send an email to um, this is the one this is the one that we want to forget. Remember, this is my second email address. So I'm sending it to this address, but it should appear in my first Gmail address. So I'm going to say, hi, uh, did you get this? Okay, we won't put anything in the description area. I'm going to select send. So first off, let's go to the, um, the old address or the one that we want to ignore. So of course we received it here, right? This is where, uh, where we sent it to. We sent it to this second address, but we don't want to have to look for our messages here anymore. So let's go back to our primary email address and look at that. It showed up as we have set it up. Perfect. Exactly. This is exactly what we want happening. We don't want to have to go here anymore. We want those emails to come back here. It's been sent to this address. It's showing as, as two different addresses here just because I happen to use the exact same subject line and from the exact same uh, email client. Otherwise, it would just be a, an individual email. So don't let that, uh, don't let that confuse you. Um, so this is perfect. This is exactly what we want happening. Everything that is now being sent to this email address will automatically come to my primary address here. But I do want to show you one other step that's going to be most helpful. Because to complete this process, when you go to reply to this email, you don't want to reply from email address number one. What if email address number one is your personal address and email address number two was your business address? You don't want your replies looking like it's coming from your personal account. So what do we have to do there? Okay, so we're now in our primary email address account. We're going to go into settings. And what we want to select here is accounts and import. And about the third option down, you will see is send mail as. Now, of course, by default, the first one is our actual email address, right? This is the real email address that we use here. But now that we've got things coming in from this second email address, we want to add another email address. So click this link. We get a new dialog box. So now we, we get to select the name of that new one, right? So this is going to be our second email address. This is that new email address. And let's enter it in. This is scottftest2 at gmail.com. We want to leave this checkbox checked, treat as an alias. It's important that we leave that checked and we're going to select next step. Now, uh, before you can send mail as this person, as this email address, we need to verify it with, the, with that email address. So let's say send verification. And it's going to tell us that we actually have two options here. So it has sent that verification. We're going to go check that. We can either click on the link in the confirmation or enter the confirmation code. So if I move this dialog box out of the way, let's go back to email address number two. Okay, here is that confirmation that we received here. And we are going to select the link. There is a confirmation code, so I could paste that in, but I'm just going to select the link because it's right in front of me here. So I'm going to say, yes, um, I'm giving it permission. Uh, before you can send mail from this address using the first address, please click the link. I'm going to select the link. Please confirm. I'm going to say confirm. And it says confirmation success. So if I still have this other dialog box open, I can now close that because I've done this first option. I've confirmed using the link. So I'm going to close that. Uh, I don't think it gives us any other uh, information here in terms of a new email. 
um, in the uh, in the second one if we go back to the first one uh, here you can see look at that a second one has been added last time we were here we only saw the first one now we have that second email address uh, oh now it says that it's unverified so let's go back to um, uh, yes so we just received this in our second email account we need to confirm that as well right so I'm gonna click that link there and I'm gonna say confirm the Gmail user may now send mail as Scott F test two. perfect perfect okay so let's go back here and I think the only reason why this is still saying unverified is that you'll see there's not a save button on this particular page so if we go back out I'm just gonna click on inbox for a second and go back to this email I have to confirm it on this side as well so I'm gonna click that link Please confirm that you will send mail or, or sending mail as this address. I'm going to say confirm, confirmation, success. Okay, so now this is, again, this is our primary email address. Let's go back into settings. Let's click on accounts and import. And there we go. Now we have both of them listed. We saw them there listed already. But the thing that I wanted to point out is that you have the choice as to which will be your default. And in this case, uh, I'm going to leave uh, email address number one. What that means is that when you go to compose or create a brand new email, um, it's which one is that, which email address do you want to compose by default? Which one do you want to pop up uh, automatically? You can always change it, and I'll show you that in just a minute, but I'm going to leave that one there. But the second thing I want to show you here is that when replying to a message, we want to select this, reply from the same address the message was sent to. Uh, you could choose this one so that all of your replies come from Scott F test one, but that's not what we want. If something is sent to email address number two, I want to reply so they think that they're still dealing with me at email address number two. So I'm gonna select that radio button there. And now let's do one other test here. Uh, I'm gonna go back to my uh, second email address here. Uh, again, I want to send something to uh, my test2 account. This is the one that we want to ignore. Um, and I'm just going to say hello uh, with an exclamation mark. I'm going to send it. And so it should appear, right? It should appear here perfectly. It, here, it appears in my old or the one that I want to ignore going forward. There's, there's where it is. It should also appear. Yes, of course, it's appeared right there perfectly. Now, what I want to show you is that it's telling me that it was sent to my second email address. It's always going to let me know that. But when I go to click reply and let me click here, look at that. Now I'm replying as if I was replying to that message directly from this email account here. So it is set up perfectly. This is exactly what we want. Now going forward, I no longer need to log into this account ever again unless I want to make some some very um, specific changes or settings I can just deal with that email right here within my first email account and the last thing I want to show you in the settings area is that you can have two different signatures so here in your email signature here is my uh, email address number one signature I can have a separate email signature for my second email address so again it's gonna look seamless it's going to feel seamless as I'm dealing with that email I hope that you found this helpful. I hope that you uh, will look at ways that you can at, at, at ways that you can consolidate your email so you can spend less time logging into multiple different accounts and instead deal with as much email as possible in a single email account. Thank you so much for watching and please be sure to like and subscribe right here to Simpletivity. Remember, being productive does not need to be difficult. In fact, it's very simple.